Like a dairy burger, ain't ya? Don't know where they're from. Belgium. A burger. Who wants to make some burgers? Um, I meant to eat. I'm going to make a couple of burgers. I've got some mince meat left over. Um, now, you should wait your burgers. So I want exactly. I'm getting the scales as clean as possible. If you don't own a set of scales, you should buy a set of scales. I mean, I think this is about $9.99. Not even that. The amount of times they come in handy. That's zero. Oh, because cool. I'm zero. Ah, uh, 250. So 115, 118 grams each. Is it about half a pound? Just slightly more than half a pound, I think. I think half a pound is um, 112 grams. 115. Mm. Theory, this should weigh 117 as well. Meh. Because that's good enough. Um, down the line. So, just give it a good. This is just 20% um, fat beef mince. Perfectly fine for burgers. I think you can put bacon in. You could make lamb burgers, pork burgers, um, possibly some endless. I mean, if you really wanted to go nuts, you'd grind your own beef. Um, mix it up, use some different steaks. Um, but I just like making my own burgers, sometimes it's fun. Alright. You want uh, some bowl? Uh, I don't know if yet. And you press that down. To a burger patty shape. Try and keep it as whole as possible. You don't need breadcrumbs, you don't need egg, you don't need any binding agents, you just need meat. I mean, you can put onion in there if you want, but you want to dice it quite fine. Um, I'm going to go about the same size as before it all starts to break up your patties. Here you have one. People say you shouldn't handle these. Don't handle your meat. Um, handle these as minimal as possible. Because it all, as minimal as possible? As minimally as possible. I think that's the correct grammar for that one. Because um, what you're doing is you're breaking down all the fat content here. It's starting to remove the fat from it. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that, because this is going back in the fridge. It's one of the few meats you need to cook, well, red meats, that you need to cook from chilled. It just holds its shape better, holds the fat better, cooks more evenly. Um, you want the outside of it to be dry still, which is why you put it back in the fridge uncovered. Um, so you get a decent sear, same as you would with a bit of steak. But, um, yeah, you do not need to bring these up to room temperature. There's such a small surface area as well. That's just a, the mass to surface area ratio is so great. Well, the surface area to mass ratio is so great. You can use a mold for this. I don't have one, which is why I don't use. Um, aren't using one um, for there. 
any sort of mould would do. Same back, same size? Yeah. Meet that. Right, have a washy wash of the hand, your hands. Twenty minutes later. Yeah. So like I said, that's that was a five hundred gram bag of box of mints, tray of mints, carton of mints. Um, that it was half of to make some tacos. Uh, that video should already be up. Uh, I'll put a link in the description down there. Well, I don't know if you can still do the link at the top thing. I might put it up there. Yeah. Go nuts. We might be even at the end of the video. We'll, we'll see. Uh, oh yeah. Get that out. Cheese. Uh, for Edam and Gouda. Um, couldn't get normal burger cheese. I actually think normal, like, this American cheese, burger cheese, is actually add a certain je ne sais quoi to a uh, burger. Because it's the beginning of the summer in Britain, everyone's going out. I've got a Gouda, I think, not Edam. Uh, yeah, everyone in Britain's going nuts for the first bit of decent weather we've had. Um, there's not a burger bun, well, I was lucky enough to get some burger buns, but there's no burger cheese. Why have I come over here for this? Uh, right. Preheating, see this is one big massive carbon steel pan. I haven't got a plancher, I wish I had a plancher, I don't have a plancher. You can do this in the type of frying pan. Cast iron, carbon steel, non-stick. Um, do it on a barbecue. Do it on a griddle. Um, I'm not a big fan of doing it on a griddle because you only get contact on certain parts of the meat and that's the only parts you get the char on. And you want the whole of that, like a steak, all of it to get char. So, yeah. Start for eating that. I like them trying around this. Just got the extra pan to toast the buns in. Just got to toast your buns. Right, fillings. I like... Sauce. And I quite like to make my burger sauce kind of like uh, Big Mac burger sauce. And inside the Big Mac burger sauce is diced pickles. Or it might be diced cornichon, I can't remember. I have got the uh, the recipe somewhere. Well, insofar as anyone's got the recipe. I've got the, the book that's like the greatest most influential recipes of all time, something like that. And it tells you what's in it, but it doesn't tell you the ratios. That's The ratios are the uh, McDonald's secret. Uh, I think I might only need the one of these. This is sometimes referred to as a comeback sauce as well. Done that in the first instance, but a lot easier. Right, now, got kind of mayonnaise. American burger, a hot dog, mustard. 
and ketchup. And that's not open. Is one that open? Yes, there is one that is open. Oop, I need the oil. Look at that. Uh, I think the. Uh, I think the um, Big Mac sauce has garlic powder and onion powder and stuff in it. Um, don't quote me on that, but I'm fairly certain it does. Instead, if you wanted to spice it up a bit, or um, leaves, papers, perfect. Um, can't tell you the ratios. I'd say it was more. Maybe a third and a third and a third, but probably a bit more tomato sauce than the other two. Yeah. Um, right, I also like raw onion. But once again, we're barely going to need any. I'm only doing the two burgers. Um, but you want it quite finely minced. Salad or something. Mm -hmm. God, it's quite a strong one. Right, that might be coming my catchphrase. Um, right. Also, every burger needs to have a pickle in it, but these are the wrong shape. shapes eat that bit right yeah I'm enough and last one least lettuce I think every burger should have lettuce in it as well Tell you what, you should always buy your lettuce by the head. Because I've had this head of iceberg now for, oh, I don't know, over a week easily, and it's still perfectly fine, perfectly serviceable. Um, I'd pop that back in the fridge. I think because it's on the root, it's like bananas, it doesn't last longer. As soon as it gets sliced and shredded, it starts to wilt. So if you buy a bag of the pre-ready stuff, pre-ready stuff, pre-chopped, pre-washed, all that sort of stuff, it just goes to crap in days. Uh, so lettuce. 
Right. Normally, I would toast the buns at the same time. Didn't need that pan. Because I'd normally, I'd toast the bun. Are these only the half cut? What's going on here? There you go. Um, Feel a little bit stickier. They're, like, they're not brioche, but maybe they are brioche. And I said it, I'll be right. I'll do them in there. Um, yeah, normally I toast the buns at the same time as the burgers, but I don't think. Turn these up a bit. I have enough space. Got a dairy burger, ain't ya? So this is a, a tea party, cream owl green tea by people like us brewery. I don't know where they're from. Belgium. Mm. Green tea. Cream owl with green tea. Mm. Fans already burning. Stop and burning. Yeah, plate that ready for them. They're taking forever. Why are the tops taking up? That one's done. Taking a month for some compared to all the others. So I guess the oh, sesame seeds popping. designed for outside grills. Ah. Right. Outside grills, you know, outside burn rings, things. Right, boikers. Bit of seasoning, salt and pepper. Before beef loves a bit of salt. And I uh, don't have to use tin foil, but I can use parchment paper or greaseproof paper, baking paper, anything like that. Um, obviously, not cling film. 
Oh well. Go that side of the pen because that side of the pen burn is there, but this doesn't go all the way back. Leave them, can't do anything to them. What we can start doing though is So some bottom. And this one there. So now the lettuce is going to shield the bun from the grease of the burger, stop it from all falling apart. Another trick that I have learned over the years, um, thin slice of, thin slice, thin scrape of mayonnaise. Acts like a waterproof barrier on the burgers if you wanted to do it that way. Um, slices of cheese ready. Take long. See, done. It's done. Right now, on that side, a sprinkle of onions on the burger. And then, over the top of that, with the cheese. What happens is the cheese steams, keeps the steam in, and it steams the garlic, uh, onion. So the onion gets ever so slightly cooked. And we put a little sprinkle of raw in there as well, though, because I like a bit of properly raw. Uh, the burgers aren't too big, you only need to still use them on one side really. Um, it's not like a steak where there's a massive solid chunk of meat, you want to get as much seasoning in there as possible. Burger. Right, I'm going to cool that in a sec and give it ever so slightly longer. Gherkins. Dude, if I go to a fish and chip shop, I, call, I ask for a gherkin. If I'm fancy a gherkin, I go for a gherkin. As soon as it goes into a burger, I start calling it a pickle. I don't know why. There you go. Le burger. Two quarter pounders. Uh, Rush, sorted. 
yeah. Enjoy it. Well, I'm going to enjoy it. If you grew up with yourself, you enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and I keep being told I should be telling people to subscribe and like and all that sort of jazz. So yeah, like, subscribe and all that jazz. Cheers. All right. See ya.